Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my wonderful 101, 101% hard video walkthrough. This is Operation 4A. It is Neo Mew, Ocean Metropolis, or whatever you pronounce that as. Crazy name place. I really like this level. It's a really fun mission. Also, you're going to notice once again that I have a proclivity towards banging the hammer on the ground. Uh, somebody pointed out in the previous video that the the little TV set that follows you, he glows green when you're near something that you can interact with like that, and he does make a noise. Um, I, I do, of course, know this, but I still like to just break things and hit things, and um, I like to be surprised. I haven't got that ability turned off, but A, I never hear it because I don't play with volume the most of the time, and I don't really look at him because I'm too busy looking around these beautiful, colourful environments. I think this is one of the, the the best aesthetics, you know, the stylized visuals of, of the generation so far. I just think it looks wonderful. There's something really great about it. It's got that awesome miniature feel. You know, it, it, I can't really think what it makes me think of or, or what it makes me feel, but it definitely makes me feel something nostalgic from my childhood that I really like, and it it's a great feeling as I try and hit these things with the hammer through the water. Which you can hit them. I just cannot remember for the life of me how. It's been a while since I played this, guys. I do apologise. This is one of those walkthroughs that, that got lost in the way of, of more popular games. That was really unfortunate, that. And it happens a lot if you're not careful. I used Unite Goats too early. And I came out of the duration of it uh, too soon. Because, of course, I'd used it too early, it ran out, and then I did take a big hit. But luckily enough, the thing I love about this game is what you're seeing. I'm playing horrendously now, but I'm also using great timing to get those Ukemis to keep myself alive. And although it looks like I'm playing horrendously, because I've done those Ukemis, I can still get the best rank in the game. And it makes running rank on this game really fun, because you can recover from your mistakes it's not an instant restart and I love that and I mean look at that if I'd have done better combos and I'd not just used that super powerful technique I would have pure platinum that verse and it would have looked like the complete opposite because of how my ass was getting slapped at the beginning but the ability to recover is so cool it really is so I'm using the claws to hit those that's what goes through the water it's the claw attack or one of the claw attacks. I'm sure there's probably something else that does it as well. But I, whenever I play this game for long periods of time and I go to other games, I find myself trying to do the Ukemi. It's amazing. And Beautiful Joe was, I believe, the game that came up with it. I think Kemi might have it in it. Oh, Ukemi. Uh, what? Oh, Kami, sorry. What the fuck am I saying? I couldn't think of the name of that game. It had thrown me off. <laughs> I have no idea if that game has it in, but I hope it does because it just seems fitting. But that is a feature that more games need to rip off because it's so good. You don't even have to do it the way they did it. Just give us an opportunity to to use skilled, skillful timing to recover or to, to, to heal or, or something. Like Bloodborne has a, an interesting mechanic called the regain system where after you take damage, there's a small window where when you strike an enemy and you're aggressive, you'll get that life back. You'll recover some HP. And I think it sounds like a really interesting idea. I've, I've yet to see how it plays out, if it's balanced, if it works, if it's fun. But all of that stuff I will know in, in March. Because I'm going to get that game because it looks amazing. But of course, I say March instead of February. And if you haven't heard, it's been delayed. And I think the delay is a good thing. Because I can almost guarantee you right now, that game's frame rate is going to be fucking awful. And if it had come out in February, it would be even more awful than it's going to be. So they've got an extra month to try and get those frames up, get that frame rate steady, get it set and locked in, and hopefully, even if it is 30 frames per second, which it undoubtedly will be, it's a solid 30 frames, not a solid 12. Because I went back to, to, to Dark Souls when I heard about an ability to get infinite souls, and I wanted to test out, see if it worked, and see if it wasn't just one of those videos that people put up which are bullshit to try and get views, and... It did work, but the first thing I noticed coming off playing nothing but Street Fighter 4 for like a week 
Uh, Street Fighter 4 and Bayonetta 2, where those games run at really high frame rates. Uh, obviously, Street Fighter 4 is, is a better frame rate than Bayonetta because it's constant. It never seems to fluctuate. And you get used to 60 frames a second, so when I went to bloody Dark Souls, that game seemed to run in slow motion. It was the most horrendous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, I was in Firelink and I took two steps forward and it was like a goddamn slideshow. It was brutal. Absolutely brutal. But it's also a testament to how your eyes can adapt and adjust. Because when you're playing Dark Souls, you don't notice that the frame rate is shit 90% of the times. You notice when the frame rate is shit the 5% the of the time, when it gets really shit. But even in the times when it's good, it's still bad. <laughs> and you just don't realise, because you're so conditioned to just be like, Oh, it's awesome, I'm having too much fun. Which is the greatest thing about the human brain, that it can turn those problems into white noise if you like something enough. And it stems back to that opinion that, you know, even bad games can be fun. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with liking bad games. It's just, objectively, you have to appreciate that they're not good. <laughs> and some people can't do that. And that's a perspective that gets warped the other way as well. Some people think highly subjective things are objective, and they'll, they'll argue them. And in a lot of my commentaries, for the theatre of them, I will argue subjective things as if they were objective. You know, like I, I say absolutist statements that are both silly and ridiculous. And for the majority of people, they, they understand at that time that I'm joking, even though I sound serious, and that it is essentially me saying something to incite something from the people that are not following the conversation as closely as the others. But of course I realise, you know, on a, on a completely serious note, that they're entirely subjective things and that's my only criticism of of YouTube at times you know once you get rid of all the bullshit and it's just you and the people that watch the videos you're gonna get people who hate you're gonna get people who don't like what you're doing for whatever reasons they want to have every channel has them guys you know there's no YouTube channel without people who are naysaying it it just doesn't exist the nicest best happiest channels on youtube still have people who hate them for whatever reason like i subscribe to a guy called maximilian dude and he's just a fun guy who has really good production quality who covers fighting games and even he the nicest sounding dude who gets excited over the simplest things gets accused of like fake hyping of like promoting shit and being biased and all this other bullshit and clickbaiting and all this other and it's just a guy who's excited to share videos of the stuff he loves and yet people hate that dude look at PewDiePie the most successful youtuber in history he turned his comments off the dude turned his comments off if that does not tell you what YouTube truly is I don't know what will and it's just that general ignorance and venom of, of, of certain people and all channels get that it just don't exist but to, to bring the the, ch the the tangent back to what I wanted to say was the one thing that irritates me the most in all of it I don't mind the hate I don't mind the ad hominem nonsense I don't so much mind the people using me as Google when they could have took the time it took to type what they asked into Google and had an instant immediate answer which baffles my brain even though on one side I understand that maybe they want the answer from somebody who they, they just want a response from. Maybe it's just that, you know, the objectification of somebody they idolise or they, they, they respect or they want to be or whatever they, you want to sway those psychology. The thing that gets me the most is the people who say subjective things as if they are objective when it comes to how you should run your YouTube channel. Oh, by the way, these Godzilla monsters, I'm constantly trying to use the claws on them. I'm constantly getting hit by that attack there, which winds me up. Because even if you avoid it and you dodge, you still take the hit. Dodging those closing wings, or whatever they are, is probably the hardest attack on this game to effectively dodge. Because the detection on it is bullshit. It's really tough, and... Um, I really need to study this enemy more, I need to sit down with him and I need to find out a really good strategy of never getting hit by it because it hits me all the time and as much as I just got the best rank on the game, I did not think that was a good fight, I didn't like it because I didn't perform the way I wanted to. 
But that's why this game is awesome, because you can still pull it back. But for the people who don't understand what I mean, I get a lot of people who give me crit critique, feedback, advice, things of that nature uh, on how to run my channel. And I don't mind it at all, as long as it's valid. And what do I mean when I say valid? If you're saying to me that you can hear, every so often, the oscillation of a computer fan that's affecting my audio of my commentary and lowering its quality, you would be 100% correct. And I would agree with you, I would apologise, and I would say how I'm striving to, to get a better setup where you can't hear my tower, even though I've done things along the lines of, you know, noise removal to try and make it sound better, and it really doesn't, it just makes me sound a little different, uh, and it affects the audio levels. You know, that is something that is completely valid, I'm fully aware of, and I hate, because at this moment in time, there's nothing I can do about it that fixes it the way I want to fix it. Like, I don't have an ideal position for my mic, I don't have a, a shock-mounted arm for my mic so that it's directly in front of my face and it gets the best possible direction in my voice. There is a million and one quality things about my videos that can be subtly improved that many people will never even notice, but I will, because, you know, I, I see the production side. And if anyone points those things out and mentions maybe you should try this, maybe you should do this, those are perfectly viable, you know. Those are the kind of criticism and critique that channels need, that channels get better from. When people point out typos and things in, in descriptions and, and spelling mistakes or what have you, those are the kind of um, feedback that you want and you need if you want to have a good project or a, you know, a good project or a good product. They're, they're necessary because you're going to make mistakes, they happen. If you don't have audio on your video because you've rendered it incorrectly and you don't realise because you make so many videos and you're constantly on a schedule of uploading, you need that kind of feedback. All of that is awesome. Even the feedback with the people who say, you know, I think you shit, you talk too much. There's, there's something in that, that that can be useful because it it generally says more about the person who, who's insulting you than it does about your channel. But there's something you can take from them. You know, it's not for everybody, your particular style. And that's the point. It's YouTube. It's, it's your videos. It's what you want to do. But it's, it's when the people who say, here's how... The, your channel will get better. Like, there's some arbiter of, of, of how YouTube works and this formula, this golden ratio that that is imperative to get success. You know, it's 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 been empirically tested to, to work 100% of the time. It is now so good, we've made it a rule. It has now been mandated, it has now been... Everybody got together, it was a huge consensus, and this is how it works. This is how you make videos, this is how you do them, this is how you make walkthroughs, and... It's profoundly ignorant. And I wish I could ignore it, but I can't, because it's those people that frustrate me the most. Because there's no way to do any of this, guys. It's entirely creative. Unless it's something technical, it's entirely subjective. So you can't say you're doing this wrong or you're doing that wrong. You can say maybe you could try this or you could try that, but you can't say you're doing X wrong because you're not doing Y. It's not how it works. You know, the people who come on and say you should talk about the game in a walkthrough and only the game that, you talk, that you're doing in the walkthrough. And there are people who fervently believe that is the only way to do walkthroughs. You should talk about what is happening on screen or you should talk about only the game that you're playing. They have no capacity in their fucking brain to even contemplate the notion of talking about something else. It's, it's too much of a cognitive jump for them. They can't process it. So they'll just immediately say it's wrong. Why? Why is that wrong? Answer's simple. It isn't wrong. It's just not to your taste. It's not to your preference. But you can't see that because of solipsism. Because of the sun is rotating around you and all of us are just puppets in your grand orchestra. Like, no! Come on, people. The world doesn't revolve around us. Like, some guy left a, an interesting comment saying... <laughs> Essentially, he insulted my Let's Plays, so immediately you know the guy's an idiot and ignorant. And he, and he said, how much I must love the sound of my own voice, because I talked through my walkthrough telling people what to do, and interesting different tangents for when there was nothing interesting happening. And immediately, the guy 
thinks it's a let's play, which the definition of a let's play is, is you play a game and you talk over it. There's not many let's plays that don't have commentary. There are plenty of walkthroughs that don't have commentary, but not many let's plays, because that's kind of the point. So his immediate assertion is stupid, founded on stupidity. So anything from there, is there's not really much you can go, is there? There's not really much you can redeem this with. So to then go on and say that I love the sound of my own voice, I have talked on over 3,000 videos, on an average time of about 10 to 15 minutes. Of course, some of those videos don't have commentary, some of those videos are, are 2 to 5 minutes long, some of them are an hour long, some of them are 40 minutes long, some of them are 30 minutes long, you know, it's a fluctuating amount of time. I have podcasts where I talked for nearly 4 hours. I hate the sound of my voice. I hate it with every fibre of my being. I sound like a fucking savage. I deserve sticks and muds and to be held in a cave. It's disgraceful. But there's nothing I can do about it because it's how I sound. <laughs> Unless I move to a different place and pick up a different dialect, I am stuck with the way I speak. So the only thing I can do is at least say something that's worthwhile because I can't fix the sound of my voice and I can't fix how much I dislike the sound of my own voice because I am sat here talking to myself and it's not healthy guys it's not natural at all it's weird but it is something that I do to make these videos better because the videos talk speak for themselves they do if you're watching this without my commentary you are getting everything you need to beat this game because I'm showing you how I'm doing and it is literally monkey see monkey do not to say you're a monkey but you get me when I commentate on it, I'm telling you of the nuance and the little things that happen and pop up and, and occur. Like this section right now where we're playing as Wonder Blue. When you get close to this lady, you want to attack her about three to four times and then get out of there. If you attack her anymore, you might run the risk of running your batteries down and not being able to, to finish this fight as effectively as you could. Once you attack her, you need to get away or she's going to spin that circular you know, Skeletor platform she's on, and it's going to do damage. If she touches you with the heart, I forget what it does, but it's not good, and of course she fires the missiles. You can do a wonder block, I believe, and a wonder evade, and get benefits for doing them, but you don't need to. And it's literally a patient fight, this, that you can do rather simply, and it's, it's, it's interesting, it's fun, it's different, but it's not as good as the overall gameplay of the Wonderful 101, because you don't have your team, so you're limited. That right there is all the information you need for this fight. I can now leave the fight to play out. You already need what you need to watch. You've already played it yourself, so you know what she's going to do. You have a general understanding of the game. It doesn't need to be commentated. But when it is, it adds an extra dimension to the videos. Not only does it add my experiences, my failures, and my advice to avoid those failures, but it also adds a, a, an element of character to it. It feels like somebody's guiding you through it, it gives you something to empathise with, and there are a lot of people that put it on just to have a voice in the background doing something while they're doing things. You know, it's, it's one of the best things about YouTube to just put on someone whose videos you like and just listen to them how they beat the game, what they learnt, what they do, you know, what they had for dinner, depending on if they have any tangents or any silly moments. There's no right way to do it, folks. And the people who profess that it is, it's just, I can't imagine having that kind of brain that limits things the way that it must. Because it's, it's, it's just, yeah, I can't even put into words, I can't even vocalise how insane it is to me that, that people cannot realize it you know to me it seems like the most obvious thing in the world you know, if you live your life only looking right when you cross the road something's gonna hit you from the left that doesn't mean looking on the left is wrong or bad or not the way you're meant to do it that just means you're fucking stupid and you need to cross the road properly you know it's it's just bizarre but you'd be surprised the amount of stuff that I get on the channel that are, are, are along that nature and I think the, the worst part of it is they think they're doing you a favour. You know, it's, it's like they're going out of their way to, to help you when it's just not the case. It's just all you're doing here is, is putting something so stupid in this comment section that I want to block you before I even told you how stupid it was. <laughs> and it's just that thing of... I'm trying my best to have more patience with idiots 
but it's difficult, folks. And my subscribers are awesome for that, you know. They generally have some of the most interesting things to say, and even when I disagree with them, even when we clash and we, we have a nice back and forth, it's always founded from respect, as I go a little bit long there for getting the best rank, but as you saw, pretty simple fight, pretty fun. But it's always founded on respect, and to, to bring it back to that, the fellow who said I must be in love with the sound of my own voice, uh, I, I essentially said to him that, you know, this is a walkthrough, not a let's play, so the commentary on it is to help people get through the game. And uh, I also said I hate the sound of my own voice, but this is a walkthrough and this is the way I produce and this is my style and this is what I'm known for. And this guy went on to call me rude <laughs> after he'd essentially insulted my work and insulted me. You know, it, it just, that's the mentality of, of some people on the internet and it's easy to just write it off and say the internet's full of stupid people and it is. But every so often, you just have to, you know, just elaborate on what that means. And if you're going to get into making channels, because I get a lot of videos, I say videos, I get a lot of comments on my videos from people who, you know, have got capture gear and they're, they're making videos and they're trying to build audiences and stuff. That's the stuff you, you don't really hear too much about uh, a lot of the times, because... You know, most channels will hide those bits of information for you, and a lot of the time it's for the better, because it's it's not really stuff that you need to know. But I, I find it really interesting to analyse just just the mentality of a person that goes onto a channel. Platinum, <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> Funny though, and tells them how to run things. You know, it's it makes me wonder if they're communist or if they live in communist countries. <laughs> it just it's bizarre. But this is the crab guy. At this point in time, we've fought this dude enough for you to know my basic premise on killing him. There's a way to make this guy open up and get his legs so that you can chop them really quickly. I'm just not too good at doing it. And every time I, I fight this dude and I get to the end, I will get a gold on time or I'll pure platinum him. That seems to be the only results I get. And because I've said that, I'm going to get a different result now <laughs> just to contradict myself. Because that's how, how commentary works, folks. As soon as you say something, the commentator's curse crops up and something different happens. It's, it's brilliant. It truly is. And then it makes you look like an idiot. <laughs> like when you, you say something, or, or you use the wrong word, or you mispronounce a word, or something along those lines, and because your brain is running and you're commentating, you don't notice as much. A really easy thing to mispronounce something that you know how to pronounce but you mispronounce on the commentary is when the audio levels spike in the video. Whenever something loud happens while you're talking, it throws off your brain's ability to hear itself. It throws your, your ability to hear your words and it makes it harder to say them. And there's some hilarious videos on YouTube of people going into uh, this... It's like a controlled environment where he puts these headphones on them and it pumps super loud noise into their ears and they have to pronounce things and they can't they're literally blah, 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 like babies because they can't hear their own you know the, the way that they're crafting the words so they're trying to say them and it's just not working and it, it introduces you to this this you know connection that happens all the time that you're not aware of because you're doing it autonomously and that is you know you you're hearing the words you're trying to say and you're making them the way they're supposed to sound. And all of this is happening at light speed with your brain, but as soon as you remove that ability to do it, you're like, he's <laughs> some dribbling hobo with half his face paralyzed. But this is the end of the crab, and I believe this is the final encounter of this chapter. It was quite a long one, and we had a pretty long tangent in there for the folks that like that. Oh, interesting, look at that. Platinum on time. How long did that feel? That felt like I was taking ten times longer than I should have. And that's the, the disconnect I have with the scoring on this game. There are times when I get the best rank and I really feel like I was doing it wrong. <laughs> and it's confusing. I'm not used to that on Platinum games. Oh, the, the video continues, I tell a lie. This is interesting. So... As you can tell by the lowering frame rate and the lowering fidelity on both resolution and graphics, uh, we're on the touch screen now. That's why I'm not moving the, the well, I say moving the camera, that's why the camera's anus and it's following us. What you have to do here, I don't know why I'm looking that way, I need to jump that way. 
Oh, I'm trying to right the camera behind me. So, on the television, there is the spaceship that is firing into a bunch of coloured vents. Whichever colour it fires into is the colour the electricity will come from when you're inside here. You have to look at the television, see where he's firing, and navigate this maze without being electrocuted. It's a lot easier than it looks. The first time I played, I had no fucking idea what was going on. I was just looking between both of the screens like a dog that had been shown a card trick and it just wasn't understanding it. It was weird, but once you understand what's happening, it's, it's actually a pretty cool idea. It's, it's one of the more graceful uses of this function. I still think it doesn't deserve to be in the game as much as I commend their creativity with it. Because this is a game that could be on any console, if not for these sections. And I don't know how they would put this to other consoles. Because everything else, like the one thing I thought would not be able to be done on other consoles was the drawing mechanic. Because I assumed you had to do it on the tablet. I assumed the point of it was that you drew it. Everything you see me drawing, I'm doing on analogs. Because the analogs are the way to go. Don't get me wrong, doing it with your hand is faster. Because you can be super quick if you're good at the drawing mechanic on the tablet it's just it forces you to look away from the screen i find because i haven't got to the point where i'm comfortable enough to draw without looking down so this is where the screen transitions make sure you have the sword on if you don't have the sword on you will not deflect the laser of the vehicle do you notice how he's just blasting the doorway so you have to walk into it with your sword or you'll die but there we go, reflected the laser, and that's the end of that sequence, and thus the end of the mission, or the operation, sorry. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for listening, and you take care now.